graduated from the Gambia College. Ibrahima graduated from the Gambia College. Dinta graduated from the Gambia College. And Chapmanik Wendy graduated from the Gambia College. So we are all from there. So that's the good thing. So it's, it's, it's us coming back home. And we are delighted to see young and passionate um, teacher trainees like you. And of course, uh, we also have the School of Agriculture. Um, we also have the School of Public Health. So I do not forget that each and every one of you are here. And we are happy that you people have taken up the responsibility to become active participants in the nation's building, which is one thing that we as youth will have to continue to prioritize because that is what makes us who we are. As they say, it says that, um, tell me the activities of the young people in your country, then I'll tell you the future of your country. And if we are passionate about developing ourselves and developing the younger generation, then therefore there are hopes that we will have this country come in a much brighter space. So we are going to have a parliamentary debate. And the first thing we are going to do is we'll announce the topic that we are going to do. Um, you will understand that these people that are seated here that are coming to the debate do not have the topic yet. So we are going to give them the topic now. So but before that, we do the rules. This is how it goes. So a parliamentary debate consists of four houses. Now, these four houses are designated into two banks. If you come to the assembly, you will understand that we have the opposition in the assembly, but we also have the government in the assembly. So that is what constitutes the debate. So we have the opposition bench, and then we have the government bench. The government bench comprises of four people. These four people are the prime minister, the deputy prime minister, the government member, and the government whip. These are the four people that are going to be on the government bench. And then we come to the opposition bench. In the opposition bench, we have the opposition leader, the deputy opposition leader, the opposition member, and the opposition whip. These are the four people that will comprise of the opposition bench, which has not yet been decided. It will be decided after we have a balloting to indicate that each and every one of them fall where they are falling based on fair play. And these are the rules. In a parliamentary debate, you are given seven minutes. Each speaker is given seven minutes. Now, this seven minutes that you're giving, debaters take note. You have the seven minutes divided into three. We have the first two minutes that are secured by the panel of judges, meaning during the first two minutes of your deliberation, not any part of the debater should be able to intervene in your speeches. The first two minutes. After the first two minutes, one of the adjudicators will clap her hands or his hands twice indicating that the first two minutes has elapsed. Now you have four minutes in big way. This four minutes that you have, the opposition or the person that is speaking from the other side has the authority to stand up and ask you a question. They will either say POI or they will interrupt your debate by wanting to ask a question. These four minutes are your own. Us as judges, we're doing nothing with that four minutes. If you allow them to ask you a question and you answer the question, there are marks for it. In fact, 10 marks for reporters. But if you do not accept any POI, it means you do not have that 10 mark. But also, if you are not asked at all, it's, it means you still have the 10 marks. But when you are asked, it's binding that you should accept. But once you accept one POI, it's up to you to accept any other. It's up to you to not accept another POI. But you at least must accept one. You can choose to accept the first question. You can choose to ask, ask the person to sit down until when you're in your fifth minute and you take the POI. That is your choice to do. I want to know you know the rules. So it is just that we are clear and then we understand what we are looking at. So basically that's what the rules are. So you, and then after the fifth minute, I mean after the sixth minute, the last minute is also a secured minute. You cannot ask questions during that time. So once the last clap goes to indicate that you are left with one minute, you cannot be asked a question. So meaning you people seated will not be able to ask the person that is speaking a question. So basically, these are how the rules go. So what are the things that we are looking at? 
we're looking at the content of what you are going to deliver. And then we are going to score the content out of a point. We are also going to look at your projection. Despite the fact that we have a mic that will enhance how our audibility goes, but we are going to look at how much do you project for the audience to hear you. We are both going to have a mic for that equally. We will also look at your composure. How are you able to communicate to the people that you are addressing? It's something that is really very important. So we're going to look at that. But we will also look at how much do you spend in making your points, meaning the time that is going to be allocated will be looked at. If you like, speak for 10 minutes. We will do what we need to do as judges to deliver your marks very, very well. If you like, speak for two minutes. We will, as judges, do what we need to do to deduct your marks very, very well. But you must understand that your time that is committed for you is seven minutes. And the other thing that we are going to look at is your organization. We are teachers. We're supposed to be very, very organized. How do you organize your deliberation? How do you put your arguments together? Because if you want to convince someone, you must be strategic in how you argue out your point. So we're going to look at these items. So these are the six items that we are going to be looking at. Now at this juncture, I want to announce the topic. And after the topic is given, we are going to give these debaters um, 15 minutes. That's the rule, right? Is it 15? How much? 15. So we're going to give them 15 minutes to go and prepare. Under normal circumstances, you do not use electronic gadgets to make your research uh, within these 15 minutes. But I think we can lose enough of that. So you can make your research if you like with your phones. That's very, very okay. So in the meantime, we're going to announce the topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay uh, one thing I... I'm a teacher. So one thing I forgot to say is that we need to ballot the houses first. So um, you can go to one of the adjudicators and then pick a number. If you are number one, did you number them? Huh? Four and a, uh, right one to four. Just one to four. So if you take number one, that means you are the opening government. If you take number two, that means you are the closing government. And if you take number three, that means you are the opening opposition. And if you take number four, that means you are the closing opposition. One, two, three, and four. One is opening government, where you have the prime minister and deputy prime minister. Two is government member, where you have the government member and the deputy government member and the whip. If you take three, then you become the opposition, where you are the opposition leader, then the deputy opposition leader. And if you take four, it means you are the closing bench for the opposition. Is that understood? So you can take, you can send one person from each team. So I will just quickly read out what your positions are like so that we confirm and then we continue with the debate proper. We have um, Yusuf Adiba. Yusuf Adiba is the prime minister of this debate. We have Haruna Mane. Haruna Mane is the deputy prime minister of this debate. We have Dauda Ba. Dauda Ba is the government member of the debate. And then we have Sankung Kasama. Sankung is the government whip of the debate. And then on the opposition bench, we have Biran, Biran Bishala. Biran is the opposition leader. And then we have Ismail Abba. Ismail Abba is the deputy opposition leader. And we have Philip Mendy. Philip is the opposition member. And Al Haji Babu Chan is the opposition whip. On the motion which reads that, on the motion which reads that, this house believes that the traditional teaching methods are superior to progressive student centered methods. I have the honors to invite the Prime Minister to open the debate. The time starts, the moment he starts. Uh, which, I don't know if it is. Good afternoon to each and every person individual in this house. Before, uh, before going further, I would like to introduce myself for the benefit of those who don't know me. I go by the name Yusman, you are also known as Scientist Liver. And the justification of my presence here today is to debate on a topic which says this house believes that traditional teaching methods are superior 
the Progressive Student Center Abroad. And therefore, I stand to support the motion because this is something that is very basic and obviously it is something that is established with facts. So, but before proceeding, I would like to take you through the structure of my debate. The first thing that I would like to do is to set the parameter of the debate, define the key terms, give three points, summarize, and then in summary, I conclude. As I have said earlier, to give the parameter of the debate, my debate will be based on educational and social aspects. Proceeding to the key terms, Traditional teaching methodology. It refers to the method of instruction in which the teacher facilitates knowledge to the student through lectures. And the reference of this is UNESCO. And then the second key point there is higher in quality, which serves as a definition for superior. And then the other, the other key point there is superior, progressive student centered upward. According to teaching methodology, this is a kind of teaching process in which most of the actions are done by the students themselves and then but the teacher is there to assist. So moving with my points, the first point that I would like to give is it promotes active learning. As students and teachers, there is a sense of relationship between the teachers and the students. So therefore, if the teacher is there to facilitate the educational process by playing a role that the students are also going to play another role, then therefore the teacher will be there to facilitate so that there will be a sense of relationship between the students themselves and, the stu and, and the, with the students and the teacher. And then therefore if that happens, it means that there will be a sense of active learning because the students will learn what the teacher is saying and then the teacher also will know that exactly the learning whether it is pro, uh, whether it is active or not but if at all there is no sense of active learning the teacher will exactly know that there is no sense of active learning so therefore the teacher will come up with different methods to make sure that there is a sense of active learning and then he will be able to facilitate the learning process but if at all there is nothing like the teacher playing a role with the students so therefore if there is no active learning, the students themselves will be playing or doing something else without the knowledge, uh, without the notice of the teacher. So therefore, the teacher will be there to ensure that there is active learning, and the students themselves will interact, and then there will be a sense of active learning. Moving to the second point is the traditional teaching method aims to teach students the importance of time management. Don't mind you can just see I give you something beneficial so that you can succeed and then be useful to the society. Teach students the importance of time management because the teacher will always make sure that whatever work the students are going to do, it is basically centered on specific time limit. So therefore, the teacher will make sure that the students, any work that they are doing, there is a particular specific time for it. And now the students will develop a sense of good time management. And when there is a sense of good time management, it means that even after their educational process, when they leave their educational institution and they go and they go to other places, it means that still now their the skill of time management will be available and they will be able to deal with things by considering the time limit and they will be able to do anything based on time limit. Moving to my third point, it promotes practical aspect of learning. Like in science areas, we have biology, chemistry, and other science subjects, and many other subjects that are not impact science. So therefore, if the teacher is there to play a particular role with the students, then therefore, in laboratory, the teacher will be directing the students what to do. But if at all the teacher is absent or the teacher is playing a minor role there, so it means that the students will not stand a possibility or a chance so that they will be directed on what to do. But as far as the teacher is concerned, the teacher will be able to direct these people exactly what they should do. And then therefore, if that happens, it means that the, pra the practical will be based on basic facts. And then no one will be left out or no one will be misled. So therefore, there is no state of argument by debunking this motion because we all understand that 
Um, we all understand that traditional teaching methods are superior to progressive student-centered approach. And then this is the type of teaching method that we have been using for many years. And then this type of teaching produce a lot of professors, doctors, lawyers, and many other people. Because exactly in Africa here, this is the common type of teaching method that we use. And then therefore, we stand no point to debunk this motion because this motion comes with established fact. It comes with concrete facts that no one can stand to debate. Then as I proceed, I then move to the summary of my debate. When I came, I lead you guys through the structure of my debate. I said I will set the parameter, which I said and said it is based on educational and social aspect, and then give the definition of the key terms, which are traditional teaching methodology, you have progressive student-centered approach, and the other one which is which is superior. And then I told you guys that I will give three basic points. And I have given those points, which are, it promotes active learning, the traditional teaching, and the second one was, the traditional teaching method aims to teach students the importance of time management, and the third one I said, it promotes practical aspect of learning. As I go to the conclusion of my speech, I would like to tell you guys that we have just come to correct everything. And then there might be people that may come after us, but whatever they say, let Can them know that we have come to correct everything. Thank you all. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Before I introduce myself, I just want to remind this gathering that it is that the Prime Minister is educationally deficit. That he has come before us here to let us know, wanting to tell us that, that this topic which he presented before us, that he is unable to understand. My, my name is Biranti Sala, serving as the opposition member, serving as the opposition leader on the opposition bench. I'm here to debate on the topic which says traditional teaching method is superior to student center approach. Early on, we remember that the Prime Minister says that traditional teaching method is superior to student to student center approach, which I want to debunk. First, on the point, he said there is practical aspects. Since we all understand what practical, what traditional teaching methods, it is a method of teaching or a lecture in which teachers transmit knowledge directly to the students. So it's obviously the Prime Minister don't, does not know what traditional teaching methods is all about. <laughs> knowledge, he said, is also, it, is, it, it involves practical aspects. How? I want the Prime Minister to tell me how does this involve practical aspects. Since this teacher is just there to give force and information to the student and not exposing them or giving chance to the student in order to debate on the topic. So therefore, I want to debate on the topic which says that traditional teaching methods is superior to student-centered approach with the reference points. We, as we know that, knowledge of students is transmitted through lectures directly on the traditional teaching methods. And then let us look at also student center. student center methods. It is the teaching methods where students are fully involved in teaching and learning process. They will improve in, student method, in, student, in teaching method, the students will improve. I will make so, yes, let me educate you. Can you tell me what you want? Yes, thank you very much. Leader of the opposition uh, bench, when you say to transmit knowledge, can you explain to this house how those uh, how knowledge is transmitted? What do you mean by to transmit knowledge? Can Thank you, you very much, I understand. Yes. Since you are ready to receive my lecture today, I will educate all of you today. We said transmitting knowledge has to do on the traditional teaching methods, 
We said the teacher is there as the facilitator. He is there to give out knowledge what he has given. These are olden or traditional means of teaching, whereby the teacher serves as the facilitator and then will be giving force and information to the, to the students. As we are all seated here, this is a clear example of traditional teaching methods. I am transmitting knowledge. And as far as I'm transmitting knowledge to the government bench. So here, on the points I have, again, it limits interactive. On the traditional teaching methods, it limits interactive since the teacher is there to control over everything. And the other one is what? The size is not fit for approach. Some of the students will not be considered because they are, they are just differently able. We have different ability students inside. Some are high achievers. So most of the time, the teacher most of, will be focused on students that are, that are fast in learning and will not consider those that are differently able. So the other one is what? The, this traditional teaching method is firstly engaged in what? Memorizing. The teacher will be giving the topics and will ask the student to go and then regurgitate or memorize all the topics that he has been given. So at the end of the day, exams will come. They're just going to, going to remove out what they have memorized and not practical, practicalizing it in real life situations. The other one is what? It limits accessibility to facility. Since there is no what we call, there is no, no student center approach. When there is traditional teaching methodology, it most of the time limits students to accessibility because the teacher is just there to tell the students, oh, do this, you can do that, and do this, and then there is no, at the end of the day, what we call accessibility. And facility is not given because the teacher will be control of all the facilities he is there. He is serving as, let me use this word, as the imam rachif of the class. He will be giving and be preaching to the students everything that has to do. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, I want to come into conclusions on the topic which says traditional teaching methodologies is superior to students' center approach, for which I totally deny. Student center approach is far superior to traditional teaching methodology. Thank you very much. I got it. Well, everyone here present? Honorable jury, honorable timekeepers, ladies and gentlemen here present, my name stands as Aruna Mane, known as Junior Khalifa Dindimax. <laughs> I appear in front of this auspicious gathering today to strongly support a Muslim which says that um, this house believes that traditional teaching methods are superior to progressive student center. Which I said, indeed, yes. Traditional teaching methodology, a teaching methodology that some of us, including the opposition bench, pass through is the best. <laughs> I'm here. But before I go deep into my debate, I would love to tell you the structure of my debate. And here it goes. After the topic is being defined by my prime minister, I would love to give you some rebuttal from the non-entity, which is my opposition leader. From there, I will also give you my points, summarize, and then conclude. And here it goes. The first point that I'm going to rebut on is where he defined the topic in a very wrong way, where he said it is a process where knowledge is transmitted. How could you transfer a knowledge? Or how could you transmit? It's in traditional teaching methodology, in fact, in teaching in general, the teacher serves as a facilitator. You don't transmit, and you are not there to mention it again. You can, you can be prosecuted for it. And here I go to. He also mentioned that in traditional teaching methodology, it is based on memorization. Where students, teacher will come and give topics to the student, and they will go and memorize. Come on. Do you memorize all the notes that has been given to you since you started schooling? Yes. From the point, I will also tell you, he also mentioned that in his deliberation that the teacher is the one in control of everything. If the teacher is in control of everything, then there should be empty classroom. Where are the students? And what is the essence of the students? Please go it and put it in the public. And here I will give you my point where I stated that in traditional teaching methodology, which I am proudly and profoundly in support of, it is, it is a method that enhances social development of a student. 
if in student centers or they may call it in professional in progressive learning system students might be in their far corners they will do things in their own there will be no guidance there will be nothing there will be nothing that the students can do on their own i will here to tell you that since you started schooling if there was no teacher to guide you you will be fair to doom ladies and gentlemen let's be careful let no one drawn or drawn us away from there I will also tell you, at this point, it is very clear that there is social development in traditional teaching methodology, and the reference of this is from Delta, who is, a, is an administrator in Ohio University in America, who also stated in one of his books called Education for the Students, where he mentioned that it depends and also it is based on social development of the students. From there, I will also give you my next point, where you know that it is also said there is personal interaction. You interact with your tutor, and he will tell you everything about him face to face what we call it. but you are there sitting at your going to ask students where you know students will be excellent to student a group of people who are led by blind people where will you go you are going to put yourself in the ocean and if you don't mind you will sink in the ocean of mess now from there my third point is there is immediate feedback in traditional teaching methodology if a teacher stands before you, explain everything to you, whatever you don't understand, you are not there to crack your brain or you are not going to jot it down. If you are a responsible teacher, you, if you are a responsible student, you know what you are doing, you know what brings you in school, you will ask the teacher directly from that point. But if you are sitting on your own, you ask a student and he just went over and give you something that is not impact what the teacher said or what is impact not in the lecture material. You will be there rambling, parangulating you, not if you know what to do. So that is why in traditional teaching methodology, there is always personal interaction and there is always social development and also there is immediate feedback from the teacher during the teacher student. Yes, tell me, let me help you. Yes, um, tell me, can I use the mic? Yes, uh, it appears that uh, you don't understand the term methodology. Can you explain to us the meaning of methodology? Methodology is the method a teacher would use to transfer or to, you to, to, to do his lesson to the student. The method a teacher would use to deliver his topic to the student. My time is protected. Can you take your piece, please? And here I continue. I am going to um, summarize and also sub-conclude. I already mentioned one of my three points, and here I'm going to conclude where I said, after re defining the topic, where you know that the traditional teaching methodology, which is the method a teacher will use to facilitate teaching and learning in a classroom or in wherever you may be. From there, I give you my three points, which is there is personal interaction, and also there is social development for the students, and also there is positive feedback right away in the classroom or wherever the lecture may hold. And here I go and take my seat and listen from you from your non entities. Thank you all, and my name is Arnaud. Good afternoon. First of all, my name is Ismaila Bach. Over times, I'm called by Ismail. Uh, greetings to the members of the high table, to our honorable adjudicators, co debaters and the distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I greet you all. As you heard from my co debater uh, in different views. I will set my structure to send my rebuttals to our government bench, strengthen the points of my opposition leader. I would like to remind the Prime Minister from the government bench, as we are described as non-entities, but we are not served knowledge so far from the government. You came here to define or to give us the importance of traditional teaching methods over student-centered. And the first of your definition, you contradicted yourself by using the term traditional teaching method 
you want to give us a clear definition and you are saying that term describing as something from your definition you already inter uh, you already contradicted yourself you cannot promote something and use in those terms that is wrong and just work on your grammar please I don't have time so far. The other argument that I want to put forward is, you said in traditional teaching, the student do the action. What actions? You need to be specific. This is debate. The audience need to know what is going on here. So you cannot just be idling behind the truth by using action. What action are they doing? So I am telling you that they are not only doing action, but they are interacting talking to one another, explaining to their friends in order to understand. The actions would have been more clear. My other argument that I will want to put forward is, you said time management, which still I have to argue with you. You clearly mentioned that there is time management, and yet there is no effective teaching in learning. So my point here is to strengthen my oppositional leaders definition and the key terms that he put forward here. He made mention about traditional teaching methods being a, where the teacher facilitate knowledge, which is the fact. You just face us and give us what you give us what you have and go and sit. You don't even bother to know whether student X or Y have understand or not. And if you don't test their understanding, how will you know where they have understood? You need to engage them in activities. And we are saying, we the operational leaders are saying to you that in student-centered method, the students are exposed to varieties of activities where they will engage in educational practice. They chat, discuss, present, explain one another, and face the, the student themselves and explain what is important for them as far as the lesson is concerned. And the other point is, the other point is, the teacher will just be there to review and strengthen what the students have done. So this is the best way of teaching that we should implement. And currently, even the, the Gambia government is working on to make sure all institutions adopt this way. All schools should be exposed to student-centered methods. Students should be given the floor to expose their understanding. From there, you take it from them. And my other point is, Student-centered improved participation. We all know that. We will be set into groups, discuss, and each one of us will participate. Different from the traditional teaching method, where you just face us and give us what you feel like to give us, whether it's accurate or not, some of us might not know. Just to conclude, and the other one is student-centered method help individuals, especially the shy one, who, should, who may find it very difficult to face the student and ask, but they are closer colleagues, they will easily ask questions to them and then they will be put forward and carried by the lessons. So these are important things that we will have to put forward. We are saying to our government, let them think, think and think again. Let them unlearn those misconcepts that they drive from our colonial masters and adopt the spirit of the 2024 era. We are saying no to traditional teaching methods. Let's go on student-centered approach. Thank you. I want to ask if the uh, logistic minister is in this house so that I plead to the uh, moderators to give these people two minutes to go and feed themselves. Because I assume that they, don't, they are not satisfied with the food that is being served to them. Because even a hungry person will not carelessly give out uh, some of these points that they are giving. That having been said, uh, honorable adjudicators, uh, members of this house, I go by the name Daudaba, and as the government member, I strongly stand to support the motion that says that traditional uh, teaching methodologies is more superior to the progressive teaching methodology. Before I get into the debate, I will set out the structure of the debate. First, I will strengthen the points that have been made by the Prime Minister and as well as uh, the Deputy Prime Minister. Then from there, I will debunk. In fact, I find it very hard 
to debunk anything because bas basically they have not made any points. They have just made hilarious points around the topic. So nonetheless, I will still talk about what they have done. From there, I will make further arguments. Then from there, I conclude. First, uh, the, uh, the Prime Minister states that this traditional teaching methodology promotes active learning. It promotes active learning because it allows interaction with the teacher. This gives the students the chance to interact with the teacher and benefit from the expert knowledge of the teacher. This is the point made by the Prime Minister, and I bet it was not understood. The second uh, point made by the Deputy Prime Minister, he said uh, students receive immediate feedback with traditional teaching methods because the teacher is present. So they will receive immediate feedback from the teacher and they will utilize the expert knowledge of the teacher. From there, I will talk about the baseless claims made by uh, this uh, honorable opposition leader. He came here and said uh, to transmit knowledge and all those things. And as far as we understand, and this house, as government bent, we don't know uh, what transmission of knowledge is. We know that as a teacher, you facilitate knowledge, but you don't transmit it. Also, the deputy, uh, the deputy opposition leader, he said, uh, this honorable deputy prime minister mentioned of time management. They're just cooking points. This person has not mentioned anything like time management. Yes, they are sort of points and they are just cooking points. So to my own argument, I will say that uh, this traditional teaching methodology has a proven track record. It has a proven track record. And anything that has a successful proven track record is more superior to anything that doesn't have that. Uh, traditional teaching methodology has a long history of success. It has been used for centuries and we have many successful uh, people who are beneficiary and significantly contributing to the society all have passed through this traditional teaching methodology. And my second point is that traditional teaching uh, methodology is efficient in learning. Direct instructions can convey information quickly. As a teacher, using teacher-centered, you can pass information quickly to a larger amount of students and with limited resources. And with the progressive system, that is not possible. When there is a limitation in resources and in capacity, the best method is the traditional method. To my second point, uh, traditional method also tend to focus more on discipline and it reduces uh, distractions and allowing for concentrated teaching and learning. Yes, can I hear from you? It appears you are lost. You are found in Nyambai Forest, I can say. I want you to answer this question. How does traditional teaching me methodology contribute to student practical aspects in education? But you should ask me from the points that I argue, Mr. Just, Mr. Leader. I, you should know what you should ask. How can you stand and ask me of something that I have not mentioned here? I am giving my points, my arguments. And he's trying to ask me from something that I have not mentioned here. But I think, I think you men, made a mention that traditional teaching methodology. The time has elapsed. I am protected now. Please, can you assume your seat? Please. So in conclusion, in conclusion, I will want to say that traditional teaching methodology has a very rich uh, track record. It has a very rich track record. Look at uh, us now those who have passed through the progressive system. Private was. Now we are exposed to private was. Everyone is going for private was. Was there anything like private was before? This progressive system is making us to fail and also come with repetition and all those things. So the progressive go to offices, G Gambia Post Authority, GT Bank, all these important offices, go to higher institutions, 
you found people who have passed through the traditional method. And this is my argument. So for that being the case, I am, I am, I am announcing that this is the end of my, uh, my argument. Thank you very much. My adjudicators, my co-debaters, members of the high table, and the awesome audience we have here for taking your special time to come witness educators like we to help in educating the government so we will have a better learning system in our land. And I will put it to this gathering that this government member, in fact, I wonder how he managed to be here because he is not professional. How can you talk in and read the podium and roll in as if you are in a classroom? He is not in fact professional. And then I will debunk his statement in which he is talking about private wars. In fact, it is due to this teacher-centered method. That is why students are failing. Because in teacher-centered method, students are not involved. If students are not involved, how can students understand? For there is a Chinese proverb which says, what I do I remember, what I learn I forget, and what I do I understand. And if what we do is what we understand and we are not involved, how will we understand? We can never understand. For that being the case, I want to put it to us that this government member in fact are wasting their parents' resources in which they are paying to them to come and learn here. And then I would like to debunk some of the statement of the prime minister in which he said in the in the teacher centered method active learning is promoted how is active learning promoted if students are not involved how here the teacher is directly the center in in fact in the teacher center method the teacher is not seen as a facilitator in which he also mentioned the teacher is seen as an impactor of the knowledge to the students it is only in the student center method that the teacher is seen as a facilitator in which he will facilitate and the students will do peer work do teamwork and the rest of the education system or the learning process in the classroom yes ask and you'll be educated because you have limited knowledge thank you thank you so much welcome I want you to tell me, or oh, you distinguish the traditional learning method and also the progressive learning method. And also, you tell me among these two, which one is practically based educational method? Thank you so much. I highly appreciate that question. And to answer that question, I would like to redefine the teacher centered method teaching like my opposition leader did define to you, in which it says teacher-centered method is the teaching-centered method in which the teacher directly impacts knowledge to the students. That is the teacher-centered method. The teacher directly impacts knowledge to the students. That is the answer to your question. Thank you. So from there, I would also like to continue in which also I will support some of the points he said in which is debunking some of their points in which we said in the teaching process it is in the teacher center it is a one go in which students of low students who easily who have learning difficulties are not considered it is only those that easily understand in fact this is where a teacher will say Nino follow you understand it is happening in our schools they did not know that these students they hardly understand or they have some difficulties and they should be helped how can we help these students it is by peer work this is that is the teacher student center method at least if they cannot understand through peer work they will understand from it and teamwork that is why we have it down there but i believe they are not just educated on that and for that being the case we will educate you here and by god's grace we will have a better nation and then to state my point i would like to say in this in the teacher center method yes you are welcome after after 
failing from answering my two questions that I asked you? He, can you please sit down? He seems to be wasting my oh. time. I don't have that time. So he, are we going to please, please sit down? Please sit down. Okay. Please sit down, please. It's not my fault that you choose not to be educated. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> to continue with my point, in the student center method, active learning is encouraged. There are potential engagement of the students and the teachers in the student centered and teacher centered learning process. So here in, as I was saying, we there will be encouragement of peer work and peer work will definitely promote the what I do, I understand. And if we understand, we will not only learn to memorize as in the teacher centered method in which we will only memorize and go and forget it when we write it on our exam paper. It is not our fault. That is why he mentioned it, but because he did not understand, he was like, if he under, he memorized all that he has been doing. Yes, he did memorize when he was learning, but immediately he dumped it on his exam paper. It is all gone. Because that is what you are teaching us in the teacher-centered method. And that is not definitely his fault, but your fault. And for this reason, we should work on involve changing our teaching method into a teacher student center method i thank you all i cannot understand i cannot understand this is simply because we have self-motivated cadets here what i mean by self-motivated cadets these are people that always tend to know something we didn't have any fundamental basic process of it. Before I proceed, I would like to give a honorable uh, greetings to the adjudicators, the members of the high table, and if, of course, I need to give a, a little bit thanks to them because they have the boldness to come and face the student, innocent student, giving them false information. My structure of the debate is, I would like to rebuild on some of their uh, false statements mentioned here, and I will also give my, my points. Number one, the, the opposition leader came here and misguided people about the definition of the motion. Mr. Leader, let me use the language, Mr. Leader. You came here, you give us your, con con uh, you give us your contradictory uh, statements, and you go and sit misguided people, not telling us the full, full place of this purpose of the debate here, which has to do with the, the traditional teaching methods are superior to progressive student center approach. Let me remind you. In those days, which has to do with the traditional teaching methods, one of them that it promotes discipline, which has to do with the strengthening the points of the prime minister, it promotes discipline. Tell me, as we are right now, tell me, the amount of lack of discipline that we are facing in this country, it is due to your, due to your misconception about the traditional teaching methods as we did. Number two, respect for the authority. I think maybe you might not have the respect for your authority, that's why you are here, standing and telling us that they don't have the right to give us the information that we want. Come on. I allow you. Mr. Man, it appears as you, don't, you, are, you are deflecting this topic. Since you are trying to tell us that we are, stu we are standing here and then it, as a result, our performance is as a result of traditional teaching methodology, then it's better you blame your government bench because we are not responsible. You are here to ask a question or are you here to interrogate me? I am here. I want you to ask a question. Ask me a question. I'm asking you the question. Ask me a question. I'm asking you a question. Even this man wasted my time. How does, how does traditional teaching methodology? Contributes to the teaching to student learning. This is what I'm saying. It promotes discipline. 
It promotes discipline. How? How? Sit down, let me tell you. Come on, you give me a question. And I need to answer it. Can you sit down, let me answer the question, please? What I'm talking about, not even on the, on the side of discipline, when it promotes your respect to your authority, you won't be giving you the knowledge. You, you have the right to respect the person. Everyone again is saying you respect them. Now, I will ask this question to the, the deputy opposition leader. Can you answer this question for me? I want you to answer the question for me. Don't waste my time, please. In a world, giving you a book, I mean a book, and to call a scholar, which one are you going to choose? Look at this lack of confidence. I give you a question and you are still sitting, looking at people to wait for them to give you the mind. Come on, if you have the boldness, you should go and get the mind. Tell me. I have a motive of wasting your time. Come on. Yes, repeat your question. Can you sit down, please? These are the people that will waste our time, and which we call the delays of the bill in the National Assembly. If you give them questions, they cannot answer. This is why I call them central debates. I'm very disappointed. The reason why all of you wear this fine suit, and you come and stand in front of people, in a sense, they're giving them false information. Come on, I'm very disappointed. My third point is this traditional teaching method, it promotes efficiency in class, which has to do with the, active, the activeness of the student, the immediate feedback that my, uh, my members have just said here. I don't know whether you are going to be deaf into this, but this is, these are the things that we need in the educational curriculum. The traditional teaching method is what we need in our generation as we are speaking right now. My time is protected, please. My time is protected, please. Can you sit down? Can you sit down? In fact, I, I don't think I need to waste my time standing here because why? These opposition leaders are always coming with their grammatical suicide and their structureless points that they always misguide students here. So these are the three points that I gave you and this is what I stick on and I believe there is no word in your mouth to come and stand here and to tell us something that we did not say. After cooking, after cooking your words or your statement that we did not even say, we shall ask something that we will not forgive you and you cannot forgive yourself for something that you put something in our mouth that we don't say. On that note, on that note, I would love to remind you that. Alright, thank you so much and this marks the end of the debate. Thank you. Good afternoon, you all. Um, so he has the guts to um, conclude the debate while I'm not here yet. And then uh, before I start the debate, please, I want to make some little corrections. Um, you know, this man, this man on the honorable side was out of points. Now he starts attacking our personality, and that is incorrect. You know, a man in a suit, if you cannot offer it, please or afford it, please don't attack our personality. We are not here for that. All right? Yeah, so um, I will start with this point where the government whip was about, yes. Um, all right. And then another point, please, before I start. He's talking about respect, that you don't ask for it. You earn it, okay? You earn it. So please. Good. Now, I'll start my debate proper. My name is Alaji Babu Tam. Um, and I am here to stand on the point on the opposition bench where I am the opposition whip. Um, you know what the whip means, right? That is what I'm about to do to them. Um, I'm greeting you, the honorable judges. You look very beautiful on your seats, and then my fellow debaters. Uh, now here, on my points, I'll leave you with my structure. That is, I will give you some few whips that they have, you know, Manipulated, trying to play with our brain, but they cannot. I will whip on that point and then add, no adding a point. I will strengthen on the points of my opposition members. All right. So, um, how can you go? Okay, now I will talk about the point where the government member talks about where he doesn't have any point to refute. My friend, how can you refute when there are no points to refute? You stand on no point to refute because you were out of the refute. There are no points to refute. We all know 
The progressive way of teaching is the only way of teaching that we can progress. That's why it is named the progressive way of teaching. Okay? Yes. So, um, another point is that it is named the progressive way of teaching because um, it is the teaching where you don't have to come in front of the students and tell them what you think per se. But yes, it is to show them we have everything that you need to show the students that this is how we learn. You bring the projectors, you bring the books, you bring the teacher, you bring the board. But in the other way, you only bring the board and the chalk to teach the students. Is that the way you want us to live with? Good. So that is where you have to bring all the other progressive ways you got to teach the students. Yes, I do not want to answer your questions, but you leave me with no choice. So, honorable, please go on. What do you have to ask? Alright, so another point is that now uh, you have given oh, me a platform. Sit down now, please. No, you have already given me a platform. And all of you are hanging to hang on to the point. And all of them are it's hanging to fight on the point where they stand to say, I mean here, we are all honorables. We aren't our seats in this parliament. You cannot come here and tell me and correcting my grammar. No, 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 no. You cannot do that. You cannot tell me transmitting knowledge is wrong. I mean, we are talking about context. We are not in a grammar class per se. The context here is to deliver knowledge, to give knowledge to the students that are in need of it. You cannot tell me that I cannot use the word transmitting because it is indefinitely and definitely correct to use transmitting. Yes. Um, yes, I will answer that, please. Thank you so much. I just want to remind you that men are described as handsome, not beautiful. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Okay, I will quote from the book Shakespeare, his book. Uh, no, it is Charlotte Brunkett. Where, can you listen please? Uh, I, will, I will quote from a book where Charlotte Brunkett was, um, you know, addressing a professor. He used all the glory words you can think of. These boys don't read. They are honorable, but they don't read. You know, in the middle days, in the, in the, in the, in the middle days, you use any word you want to use. Because beautiful in set, it is delight to use it. Another one. And then um, another point to refute again is where he says that the points, it is, a, it is the easiest way and the quickest way to teach your students. Can you tell me that standing at the board and writing on the board is the quickest way to teach your students? I can stand here within three minutes. I can deliver information to every one of you here within three minutes. Now you want to tell me that in the way of teaching, thoughts and boards are the fastest way to teach. That is indefinitely wrong. Friend, sit down. And then anyways, I want to, con um, no, not concluding yet because I still have time. The point is where they talk about uh, focus. Now, this is under um, the deputy government leader. That is Haruna. I honorable himself made this mistake. I'm so disappointed. I'm very, very well disappointed where he said that. He was focusing on the teacher instead. Talking about, we're talking about methodology, my friend. We're talking about where the methodology, the way of delivering information to your students. We are not focusing on how and how the teacher will deliver the information per se. We are talking about the methodology to be used. And here the methodology is, you'll use all the modern ways that you have here. We have all the projectors. We have all the phones. We have all the laptops to deliver information. Don't talk about the way that it has been given per se the teacher, the board and the chalk. We are not talking about that. We are talking about how the information will be given. Yes. Alright, and then another point here is uh, progressive teaching methodology has no teeth. Alright. That is that now I'm in my protector time. That is where I will show you that you have been given us what nothing but what is not true. All right, so another point here is progressive teaching. You are telling me that that is where the teacher has to stand in front of you always. It's finished? All right, thank you so much. Um, I think I have delivered all the names I have to deliver. I wish to see you again.